It is finally here, Minties, part one of the Superman Reading Order in Collected Editions. So, let's get started. And welcome back, everybody. Before getting started, I want to give a huge thank you to our patrons for voting for the Superman Reading Order. Every month or every couple of months, depending on how long these Reading Order videos take me, I put up a poll on our Patreon and I let the Patreons decide what the next reading order should be. So I think I put Superman up against the updated Spider-Man reading order. And finally, Superman won after three different times in the last couple of years that I put Superman up there. This is one that I've kind of been hesitant to do. And that's mainly because I have a lot of this stuff in custom Omnis right here. These right here make up some of the trade paperbacks that are out. But I figured out a way to show you all exactly what's been released, what's out there and how to collect it in collected editions. So today we're going to be talking about everything from 1986 to 1993. If you want written documentation of this, that will be available on our Patreon, and that starts at a dollar tier, and that information is in the description below. But there is one book that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about what else is available pre-Crisis on Infinite Earths. Uh, but I think this book is very important, and I'll explain why. And so today we're starting with Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. Now, I mentioned on my channel many times that my DC starts with Crisis on Infinite Earths. That's when the entire DC universe was rebooted. But there are some spectacular stories that I feel like people need to read. Uh, there are a total of seven Golden Age Superman Omnis available as of this video. Uh, no Silver Age Omnis yet, although there are some archives available too. There are some greatest Superman stories that collect Silver Age stories and some Golden Age stories, if you're curious about that era. But for me, my era began with Crisis. There is one story in particular that I just, I love, and, and you probably heard a lot of people talk about, and that is Alan Moore's Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. It, this is collected in deluxe edition and trade paperbacks, but this collects Superman 423 and Action Comics 583. And it also has the Superman Annual 11 for the man who has everything, but the important story here is Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. And this is like a book and story to the final days of the Golden Age Superman. So during Crisis on Infinite Earths, all the different Earths, whether it was the modern era that you were reading or the Silver Age or the Golden Age or different uh, universes, they all collided and made into one Earth. So we couldn't have two or three Superman running around or even a Superboy running around. So after this, only one Superman remained and everyone else was forgotten about. Until Infinite Crisis, but we'll get to that a little bit later. But this is a goodbye love letter to that era. This is by uh, Alan Moore, the phenomenal Kurt Swan, and of course George Pettis providing some of the inks. And just saying goodbye to a lot of those characters from the era, whether it was the Legion of Superheroes, because everything was about to restart. But I feel like it's such a beautiful story that... I think everybody needs to read it. So after Crisis on Infinite Earths, the 12-issue maxi-series, the entire DC Universe was rebooted. Every character got a new origin, got supporting cast, and their stories being retold and modernized. So this took place in 1986. And Superman started with John Byrne. It was rebooted with John Byrne in the pages of Man, and Man of Steel. It was a six-issue miniseries. And it is collected in this. And you're probably wondering what all those are well this was before dc decided to start making hardcovers uh, i had no faith that dc was ever going to do an omnibus so i decided to make my own custom omnis actually these were kirk kiefer's big shout out to him before he moved to japan, japan. and they're absolutely stunning these are collected from the trade paperbacks and then single issues and nothing is missing so i am also going to be talking about things that are missing um but if you're curious about this era, it's also available in a series of nine trade paperbacks. There you go on the left-hand side. Those are actually my trade paperbacks that I ended up, um, I think I ended up giving them to Omnidog. That's how we became friends uh, because I knew these were coming out. So I decided, no, because I was getting my custom Omnis. That's what it was. But they're also available. These four volume Superman Man of Steel hardcovers are available in nine trade paperbacks. All right, so let's come back to this. So yes, as of this video, volume four is not out, but you all voted for this. I wanted to go ahead and get started uh, before March. So, Man of Steel number one is a relaunch of Superman. We have Superman's origin being retold from the moment 
Krypton blew up, his parents in Krypton, all the way until he came to Smallville. He'll I'm just gonna fast forward some a little bit till he got his first costume, his first superheroics feats that he did, meeting Lois Lane, moving to Metropolis, getting back together with Lana Lang, his love, his childhood love, meeting Lex Luthor, teaming up with Batman. All six issues of that kind of compresses the history of Superman into six issues, modernizing them, and reintroduces old characters. Lex Luthor is a little bit different. He's more of a tycoon in this instead of a evil doer that wears a green and purple suit. That does appear though. And he has red hair during this time and he does get a little balder. But anyway, that's what that series uh, does and introduces Bizarro. We also get new characters too like Cat Grant, uh, Jerry White, characters like that, new villains like uh, Bloodsport. Here's uh, Metallo, the fight with Metallo, the team up with the Teen Titans. And all of this written by John Byrne. Marf Wolfman did come in and write The Adventures of Superman. Um, so there were three titles at the time after Man of Steel miniseries. There was uh, Action Comics, of course, continuing the legacy numbers, Adventures of Superman with the legacy number, and then a brand new Superman title, just Superman number one. So John Byrne was writing two titles, drawing both titles up until... He decided somebody else to draw the tide, one of the titles. And then Mark Wolfman was writing the other title with Jerry Ordway on artwork. So we have the team up with the new gods. There's Bloodsport right there. There are more of... I want to say that the adventures of Superman usually focused on him interacting with the human race. Whether it was in Metropolis or whether it was, you know, politics outside of Metropolis that he had to help out with thought that was an interesting take on the character because in the pages of Action Comics and Superman, he was just everywhere. Now, as of this video, this one here is out of print, I want to say, but you can still find it fairly cheap. This was originally solicited as an omnibus, but I guess the standard size hardcover is a start. So, moving on to Volume 2. Again, these are like two and a half of those nine trade paperbacks that I showed earlier. So we have new villains, you have the relationship of Lois Lane and Clark Kent building, and you have him actually getting into a relationship with Cat Grant, which is a little bit different. Um, you have the team-ups with Hawkman and Hawkgirl, which were a complete convoluted mess after Crisis. Their origin, man, it was just a mess. The team-ups with the Green Lanterns, the Legion of Superheroes do show up in here. So you do have a little bit of that past history with them. There were some changes. There were a lot of retcons. But if you had never read Superman before this, you wouldn't have known really as to what the retcons were. Uh, the fight with the Joker. I always liked the way that Burn drew the Joker. It was a creepy take on the Joker. Uh, one of my favorites, though, is still Jim Aparo. Lex Luthor now scheming some more. And we have the introduction. Oh, big Barda. Burns Barda, man. She is just as beautiful as Jack Kirby's Barda. There's a team up with a demon as well. Burn was really trying to make the demon happen through some of these pages. Oh, Mr. Uh, what's his name? Mixoplitz. Yeah, he shows up in here. The modern version. So these are all modern versions of a lot of these classic characters is what you're going to be finding here. And then we have this gentleman right here. Oh, what was it? Delgado, who turns out to be this character known as Gangbusters, who will play a bigger role in the Exile stories. But here is Volume 3. And as I mentioned, as of this video, Volume 4 is not out yet. But we are going to be looking at some of the artwork from Volume 4 because I have these custom bound. Uh, this wonderful, wonderful annual right here with Arthur Adams on artwork with the team up with Batman. This is one that I, I think I ended up with two copies as a kid because I would try to redraw the way that Arthur Adams drew Superman and Batman. I love the big chins. Uh, now we have Jerry Ordway step in as a writer because Marv Wolfman has decided to leave. Um, one of the books, John Byrne is still writing and drawing. One of the stories, we have the crossover with Booster Gold, who was a brand new character at the time created by Dan Jerkins. Jerkins. Uncanny Omar Talk Pretty one day. Jurgens. We have the... Oh, is this part of the Millennium? Yeah, it's part of the Millennium Week, which was a big crossover. I'm actually surprised the Millennium series weren't collected in here. I'll be honest. I'm surprised that wasn't part of this particular uh, collection. And they're building up this character more and more, Gangbuster. He's kind of like your vigilante. He's uh, He doesn't take crap, and he takes you know crime into his own hand. Kind of like the Punisher. Uh, DC's answer to the Punisher. I've always been a big fan of that right there, that piece of artwork. I love the fact that this right here is collected, though. The Earth Stealers. This 
I don't think this was collected in the previous nine volume trade paperback set. I think this is the first time it's ever been collected. All right. Now, keep in mind, the next book I'm going to show you is not actually Man of Steel Volume 4, but it's my custom Omni, but it does have artwork from there. All right, but before we look at some of the artwork, there is something that I need to talk about. So one thing you're going to see in between Superman, Man of Steel, and Superman Exile. So after Man of Steel Volume 4, it takes you all the way to Action Comics 600. Then when you go to Superman Exile and other stories, it takes you from Action Comics 643 to 646. So you're probably asking yourself, where are those 42 issues? Well, Action Comics became something else as of issue 601. Superman was only featured in like two pages in each issue leading up to issue 643. So I don't know if they're going to collect these stories, these particular stories of Superman two pagers in the pages of Man of Steel Volume 4. I didn't see it. All I saw was Action Comics 698 to 600 or 598 to 600. So these could be missing. Um, I did. They are part of this custom Omni. It's not like the greatest story, but I thought it. You know, as a completist, you need them in here. These were written by um, Roger Stern. Uncle Raj joins uh, Action Comics then, and then Kurt Swan supplying the artwork. But let's get to some of the artwork that you are gonna be seeing in the next Man of Steel hardcover volume four which is found here in the pages of adventures of superman 443 and this is annual number two i'm going to say annual number two that uh will also be in there that will also be collected in there i don't think the doom patrol issue is in there though but this is eric larson it's just a couple pages that leads into this particular story right here the men of steel I don't know, maybe they'll include it. And yes, you do have a new Supergirl. So if you read Crisis on Infinite Earths, you know that something ended up happening to Supergirl in those pages. But when DC relaunched Superman, they wanted to bring in a different type of Supergirl. Now, this Supergirl is known as Matrix. And she's going to be playing a big part in Man of Steel Volume 4. And she's a lot different than what you think. There's a big secret behind her. And you may have seen her in the pages if you own the Death and Return of Superman and be completely confused as to why she goes from this beautiful girl to, well, something quite not so lovely. But you can find out for yourself what happens through those pages. The other thing that I think I cannot believe they're not including or collecting anywhere is the world of. World of Krypton is done by John Byrne. World of Smallville, World of Metropolis. World of Krypton is drawn by Mike Mignola. It is a beautiful book. I wish they would do another hardcover just collecting this stuff. Uh, let's look at World of Metropolis here. So it's just kind of like introducing you to these different places that, you know, have played a big part of, in Superman's life. And then World of Smallville. Those, I don't think, are going to be collected in any upcoming collection as far as I've seen. But I did include them in here. I wish they would. Next up is Superman the Exile and Other Stories Omnibus. Now this Omnibus restored my faith in DC. Because this came out before Man of Steel hardcovers. Um, and I thought, okay, DC actually has a plan. They have mapped out all these stories to be released in Omnibus format. That take us all the way to death and return of Superman Omnibus. So known as the Triangle, triangle Years on Candy Omar Talk Pretty One Day. So... I thought that was awesome. I, I was so excited. Oh, this is some awesome Mike Mignola artwork in here too. In this particular issue. Love it. Some early Mignola. Um, but sadly, this is the only omnibus that has come out of this era. We are getting a reprint of the Death and Return of Superman this year. But this one here is just... Yeah, I don't know. It's just there. We still need a lot. And I'm going to be talking about those here in a little bit. But this is exactly where you need to go after Man of Steel Volume 4. If you want to get those Action Comics issues, let's wait and see what Man of Steel Volume 4 actually collects. Or the World of um, series, the little mini series. Those could be collected later on somewhere. Um, I wish they would because I'm a completist and I would love to own them. So part of the reason why Superman Becomes Exile has something to do with this guy right here, Gangbuster. So Superman decides to leave Earth. Something happens, and you can find out. I'm not going to spoil what happens. That makes him leave Earth. And he goes on all these adventures in outer space, different planets. If you've read Planet Hulk and you enjoy that, this is very similar. It's taking Superman out of his element, even though he's an alien that has been living on Earth. But he still considers himself quite human. Lex Luthor is doing things here on Earth while Superman is away. 
And then you get to find out something about Lex Luthor, like his health. And and I'll talk a little bit about that in one of the trade paperbacks that has a spoiler tag on it. Superman grows a hot daddy beard, as people like to call it. Not people. Me. That's what I call it. I think that's what people call it. You meet Draga through these pages. You meet Maxima through these pages, who play a bigger role later on, especially through Panic in the Sky. And Maxima actually ends up joining um, the Justice League. Now you have Mongol, who was a ripoff of Thanos, who was a ripoff of Darkseid. Ah, that art inspired by art, huh? So yes, of course, Superman, there's the beard. Superman eventually does get uh, to come back to Earth. But these are the stories that were telling the, his adventures when he went way out into deep space. Now, when he does come back to Earth, it's also the relaunch of Action Comics 643. So Action Comics 643 features Superman. And it's his return to that title. But let's keep going with the next book. If you're enjoying this video at this moment, I just want to remind you all to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. And all of that helps with our YouTube algorithm and our channel keep growing. All right. So for these next trade paperbacks, since I got these custom Omnis, I got rid of them. I either sold them or I gave them away. But what I will do is I'll put the spines right here on the left-hand side and the cover on the right-hand side so you can know what to look for. So the next trade paperback, it's only available in trade paperback, is a story called Eradication. And we're going to, yeah, look, I even did little, I don't even know what these are. Placeholders? Sure. So... I'm going to show some art that you are going to find in those trade paperbacks. Now, keep in mind, some of these are old, not as old as these single issues, and out of print, but also mapped absolutely horrible. Like, the way they're mapped is, is a freaking sin. And you'll see in part two how messed up it can be. But let's, let's go back to this. So, Superman Eradication is the story of the Eradicator. Uh, it's a character that shows up through these uh, stories right here. And he can transform himself into the Man of Steel. But he happens to be this brutal, emotionless monster. And over the course of these particular stories, hey, there's Lobo. Now you have artwork by Dan Jurgens, uh, Art T-Bert pro providing the uh, inks right here. So you get to see how he's not like Superman. Now, the Eradicator might be very familiar to you because you know that eventually he is one of the replacement characters. There's Maxima right there, who's still trying to breed with our boy Superman and is still kind of a villain, but she does eventually become a good guy later on. So in here, she's gonna, he's going to battle Maxima, Draga, uh, Lobo, and all of this stuff does help build up to what happens in the pages of the death and return of Superman, mainly the reign of Superman. So let's get to the next story. Again, I'm going to keep the spines there on the left-hand side and the cover to the trade paper back on the right. The next book is Superman Dark Knight over Metropolis. Now, there is some double dipping here because Superman Dark Knight over Metropolis is really just a three-issue story arc featuring Batman teaming up with Superman. It also, the trade paperback also collects the annual, that annual by Arthur Adams, which has gorgeous artwork. But I figured I needed to include it in here because, you know, it, it's one of those books that double dips but also has new issues collected. And you're going to see a lot of that in these reading orders, mainly with Superman. You're going to see a trade paperback that double dips a lot with the next trade, but I need it because it has one or two issues that's not collected in the next trade. But that's Superman, Dark Knight over Metropolis, is the team up with Batman. It's a great team up. It's a really good story. And this is when Jerry Ordway has completely taken over writing duties. Now, the next trade is called Crisis of the Crimson Kryptonite. So, Lex Luthor Triumphant. What is he holding in his hand? Kryptonite! That's what. So, this particular story is about Lex Luthor robbing Superman of all his super abilities. So, with the help, he actually teams up with uh, Mr. Uh, Mixoplitz in here. And it's not your normal kryptonite, as you saw. It's like a red magical kryptonite is how he ends up beating uh, Superman through these pages. So, it's all about Superman standing up against Lex Luthor when he's completely powerless. Now, this kryptonite is affecting Lex Luthor in different ways. So you're going to start seeing him wear a glove, and eventually he's going to look a lot different. But before we talk about that, we got to talk about the next story arc, and that is Time and Time Again, available in a trade paperback. 
And for the most part, the trade paperback is mapped pretty good, with the exception of, like, they just threw Superman 73 in there. But this is the story of the Linear Men, and Superman has his memory, like, he's confused. So not only has he lost his memories, he's completely confused, but he's also time-traveling. So he's going from the past to the far future. It's a really cool story that introduces you to the concept of time travel and what it's like in the DC Universe before it got completely convoluted and they had to do a DC Zero Hour, which is like a crisis in time type of story. So in here you're going to see wizards, you're going to see dragons, demons, uh, Nazis... Um, you know, some fictional history in here, and then some historical figures will show up through here. And of course, you get to find out who the linear men are and what their ties are with my boy Booster Gold. All right, the next story arc happens through Armageddon 1991. That is one event that has never been collected in trade paperback, in hardcovers, and I know it's well hated. But it brings back memories, like, and it's well hated because people figured out the ending, so they had to change it, and this was all through the internet before it was the internet. People were spoiling things. Kind of crazy. Uh, but this is part of They Saved Luther's Brain. So the actual trade paperback, you could see at the bottom, it is mapped like nuts. It's all over the place. So you, uh, it's like introducing you to Lex Luthor, getting to know him a little bit, and then it shows you what happens to him gradually. You see what ends up causing uh, his demise, if you will. But through these pages, especially issues 670 to 673, and all the way up to 678, you get to find out what exactly they did with Lex Luthor, and why you see him in a different light, why he looks a lot different. That's what that particular trade paperback serves the purpose of doing if you're a completist you're absolutely getting it uh if you're in it for the story you're going to be completely disappointed because it is a mess uh, you can fill in the blanks of course but whenever you're skipping about 60 issues in between stories there's a lot that happens and you're going to want to know more so i wish so this is the way lex Luthor looks now by the way he has a beard full red hair why does he look younger well it's called they save Luthor's brain i wonder why he looks younger but that's a story for another day Let's get to the next story arc. Panic in the Sky. This is what I hope they collect um, after Superman the Exile and other stories omnibus. They end up collecting this in an omnibus format and call it Panic in the Sky and other stories that leads up to the death and return of Superman. So this is Brainiac. He's a character. He's been previously introduced, modernized. He returns and invades Earth with this weapon called the warlord now superman is teaming up with draga i forgot to talk about bibbo here he's one of the characters that louis simonson helped introduce uh but anyway superman is not just teaming up with these outer universe type of characters he's also teaming up with the entire earth including some villains to take down brainiac 5 because brainiac not Bra brainiac 5 just brainiac and the way he looks so brainiac looks a little bit different he looks a little more menacing he looks a little more super sexy time brainiac if you will he has a cape so you know he means business when a villain has a cape. That's the way that he calls Superman. I love it. Oh, man, and his reaction when Superman dies. Light Ray, so some new gods do show up through here. It's been a while. We haven't seen them since the pages of uh, John Byrne's Superman. He teams up with the Justice League, Nightwing. You get to see some awesome Tom Grumet artwork, who becomes the ongoing artist of these books. By now, Louise Simonson is writing a lot of the stories. Uh... Roger Stern, Dan Jurgens, Jerry Ordway, and there's another title during this time. Man of Steel has started, so you probably noticed that. It's not part of the miniseries. It's now an ongoing title just called Man of Steel, and that's what Luis Simonson and John Bogdanove are in charge of. So Brainiac is putting heroes against heroes. There's some sacrifices that are made here, and it's a great story. It's been available in trade paperback, and you see the cover there on the right, but I love it. Look at the way that <laughs> Captain Marvel is drawn. So he is known as Captain Marvel during this time, not Shazam. Now, the big story and how I'm going to end this particular video is the death and return of Superman. This is the Omnibus. It's been available in three different type of printings with different mappings. The latest printing to me has the best mapping and it has the fold-out page. So one thing you're going to notice is the inclusion of these little prelude pages, which is just the last page of issues of Action Comics, Man of Steel, Adventures of Superman and Superman, and it all leads to the revelation that something big is coming and Doomsday is here. So 
during their summer meetings, they decided, hey, let's let's do something big. Let's kill Superman. But who better to kill Superman than a stranger, a complete stranger named Doomsday? And you know Doomsday's a bad dude because when he gets out, man, he kills a little bird. That's animal abuse, man. You don't trust anybody that does that crap. I remember as a kid, I read that. I'm like, that dude's horrible. I hope Superman whoops his ass, even though I knew it was coming. We all knew it was coming. So this event, all helmed by this brain trust of Louis Simonson, Jerry Ordway, Uncle Raj, Roger Stern, and Dan Jurgens together, just writing the final days of Superman as he stands up against Doomsday that's coming to destroy Metropolis. The Justice League can't stop him. Nobody can stop Doomsday. Only one person can stop Doomsday. I love the fact that the story is so epic, the panels keep getting bigger and bigger. So we go from, you know, your typical six, seven uh, panel grid to four, to uh, from five to four to three. I'm doing a bad job of skipping through here. Now we have three panel grids. The next issue, because he's getting closer and the fight's about to happen, the next issue will have two panels, right? like so. And finally, when we get to the final issue, he, we will only have one panel so splash pages to tell the story of the final fight between doomsday and superman and like i said this copy this version this printing has the best look at that it's the fold out page i love that's the reason why i bought this and it will be available in the reprint when it comes out then you get you know the funeral for a friend world without superman stories how the world is dealing um there's the character of gangbuster again how the justice league is dealing with superman being dead but then we get the reign of Superman. Here's the character of Matrix that I was talking about, who eventually will get her own series. And it's a brilliant series written by the one and only Peter David uh, with Linda. Oh, man. It's just a great story. And if you've not read it, I hope one day they collect them in proper omnibus format. We've got, like, some fat traits, but those are discontinued. So it's how the world is reacting to Superman dying. But then we get some new characters... Lex Luthor gets involved, and he's like, wait, we gotta do something about this. We gotta, you know, the world needs a Superman. So he's kind of a good guy, but is he really playing everybody, right? It's Lex Luthor. You know that you can't really trust him. So through here, we get the reign of Superman. So this is four new Superman. We have this guy right here. Let's just call him the Cyborg Superman. We have this guy right here. Let's just call him Steel. We have this guy, who you probably remember. That's the Eradicator. And then we have this young man right here, and don't you dare call him Superboy. So, of course, these are the new characters. These are the four new people that are taking the role of Superman while he's dead. But is he really dead? Because the book is called The Return of Superman. Sorry, there's nothing I can do about that. That's a spoiler in the title. And I'm sure most of you probably know that Superman does eventually come back. And, you know, with a mullet. So there's a lot... <laughs> of 90s artwork in here testosterone driven artwork over the top muscular fights some of these supermen that claim to be good aren't really good they're kind of evil and man do they become really evil so i i love this era i know it's hit and miss some people hate it some people love it but we do get superman towards the end he comes back and man the next part oh the crossover with green lantern that is heartbreaking that will lead to emerald twilight but what i was saying is yeah, the next part two of this, when we go from 1993 to, I can't remember, I think 2000, that's going to be the toughie because there's a lot of things that are missing. Uh, but again, this omnibus will be back in a print. And that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing some of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you live in Europe and are interested in pre-ordering or purchasing Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC big books within the EU, flat shipping of 990 euro for EU countries, extremely careful and sturdy packaging, emails are answered within 24 hours, and they have a superb selection of new releases and out-of-print books on their website. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code near mint condition all one word at the checkout for free shipping to all EU countries with your first order. Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They are making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for you minties. If you're a first-time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition 
at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was part one of the Superman Reading Order and Collected Editions from 1986 all the way to 1993. Are you like me and hoping that they do the right thing and collect these in omnibus format to take us all the way to Exile and other stories and then have one or two in between Superman Exile and Superman The Death and Return? Or are you happy with the standard size hardcovers and you hope they continue those into the triangle years? Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Any more questions or comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button. If you want the written documentation, check out our Patreon. And more importantly, everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.